Victoria Okanieski with Moore Sewing Center in Southern California. And today I have taken my Janome MC9450 out of the box. I have my machine, I have my power cord, my foot control, my thread cutter stitch. Um, I have a cable tie, some screws to put together with my base plate, knee lift. Also it comes with a beautiful table and you have your feet to put your um to screw on your table we have instruction dvd a stitch composer dvd and a beautiful manual that gives you lots of tips and ideas on using your feet and um using the machine you also have a really nice accessory box that has several items in it as well Okay, so when I took my accessory box and took everything out that I keep in my accessory box, you can see that there's two uh, sections to it. Really nice box. You, you got additional needles, seam ripper, a uh, cleaning brush, screwdriver, an extra spool pin, bobbins, two specialty spool uh, holders, two small spool holders, two large spool holders. And this is a quilting guide bar, stylist. And then the feet that um, you can keep in your accessory box is your darning foot, which is the PDH. You have um, a closed foot and you also have an open foot. You have your free motion foot which is um, Q, V, and you can see that everything has a letter that is put on there so that when you're going to work on it, you're um, able to know which foot it is. Then you also have your um, professional grade foot, which is HP, okay? I have my um, quarter inch foot without a guide, which is the letter O, quarter inch foot with a guide. You can see the difference between the two. Some people like to use a guide, some people don't like to use the guide. You have the choice of both. You have your rolled hem, which is D. The letter G is your blind hem. You have your free motion quilting zigzag foot. Q QC is your free motion quilting closed toe foot. QO is your free motion quilting open toe foot, and QZ is your variable zigzag open toe foot. When you take your machine out of your box, you have the letter A foot, which is your zigzag foot. It's already attached to your machine. Right now we're gonna take out the accessory box that comes off. That's when you would um, put your table on right over here. It would fit perfectly. Um, but I'm taking the accessory tray out and I want to show you what's inside there. So when I open up the front, you can put the feet that you like to use all the time or that's what I like to do. I like to put the feet that I use all the time. I have my F satin stitch foot, F2 satin stitch foot open toe. Uh, e is your zipper foot and M is your over edge foot, and also bobbins. Whenever I've done some bobbins and I have filled them, I like to just keep them right here on hand. So we're gonna lift this out. And on the bottom here, you have your AD, which is your dual feed foot, okay? And you have your HP2, which is your AccuFeed Flex Professional Grade Foot, okay? Let's put this back in. And again, you can put whatever feet you want in there. Close up our tray. And if you see right inside here, we have a place for two of the um, additional plates that you get with the machine. You get a needle plate that is on your machine already. Then you get a straight stitch needle plate and a professional grade needle plate. And this is really nice because you can keep them right here on the bottom and you're not looking for them. Same thing with the back. I keep everything that um, goes with buttonholes. 
because I don't want to be looking for it all over the place. So I keep it all together. And I have in here my buttonhole foot, which is the letter R, okay? This is your stabilizer plate. This is your button shank plate. And then your letter T, which is your buttonhole foot. And I keep everything all together in my accessory tray and then it fits right back on. And what I like is even when I have my table on, I have this close by so that I can um, uh, get whatever accessories I need right then and there. But um, that's your accessory tray. Okay, let's go over the side of your machine. Right here, you have your hand wheel. Right here is your dual feed balancing dial, your on and off switch, your foot control, your power cord. This is your drop feed lever, lever. Okay, that's for when you're quilting. USB stick. And this is your thread cutter jack and ventilation opening. That's the side of your machine. Now let's go over your operating buttons on the front of your machine. You have your start and stop, your reverse button, your auto lock button, needle up and down, your presser foot lifter button, your thread cutter button, and then over here is your speed control when you're sewing. Now let's go on the side of the machine and go through the buttons. You have your open file key, set mode key, lockout key, page key, and touch bar. And you can see you have your, your um, width and your length control. It tells you what foot you should have on when you're sewing the different um, stitches. And you're in utility with two pages. In here, you have applique, heirloom, quilting stitches, satin stitches, bridge, decorative stitches, and you have two pages of that as well. The X come out of here. Now you've got tapering stitches, and you also have five pages. And the same thing, it will um, do your um, length and width and what foot you're on, what you need to be on. And you have five pages. Here we have four different uh, uh, alphabet, which is block, script, Broadway, and block. And if we hit the script, you'll see that you have your um, uh, alphabet, okay? Then we're gonna hit, uh, it looks like a little top, but it's telling you how to do seams, over edge, blind hem and, and shell tuck, a rolled hem, how to put a zipper in, gathering, basting, button, tacking, applique, patchwork, and quilting. So if you hit the button, it will tell you to lower the feed dogs, and then it will tell you everything that you need to do for putting your um, button on, okay? And we're gonna go back, and if you hit applique, it will have different applique stitches for you as well. Go back again, again, and now you're back to your first page. Okay, now we're going to um, thread our machine and fill a bobbin. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. A couple things I wanna show you is when you lift up your top here, you can see that there's different stitches in here to help you decide which ones you want when you're sewing, when you're quilting, buttonholes, applique, heirloom, really nice um, different stitches. Also, here's a place right here for your stylus so you don't have to go looking for it. Just clicks right in right there. And then there's one thing that I wanna show you that I think is very clever with Janome. When you have your bobbins, and if you have several different machines like I do, I like that Janome puts a J on their bobbin. So I don't know if you can see it, maybe if I do like this, there's a J that's on the bobbin that lets me know that this is a um, Janome bobbin. So I wanna make sure that my J, I can read it, I'm going to take my thread and I am going to do one and go like this. 
And then I'm going to take my bobbin and hold it, but I'm going to make sure that I do about mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight, about eight times. I'm going to put it on the bobbin winder, okay? And then there's a little cutter right there that I'm just going to cut my thread, push my bobbin in so that it's going to start to um, wind. And you're going to see right here on your screen that it's telling you it's bobbin, that the bobbin is going to wind. So we're just going to hit our foot control, put the bobbin on. Now you can either um, do a little bit of bobbin or you can do a lot. I tend to do a lot because when I'm doing a project, I like to have several different bobbins already um, made up for me before I even start my project. It's just a habit that I got into. I like to have my, my um, top thread and my bobbin thread match, especially if you can see, and I do a lot of um, uh, construction sewing, so I like to have that. So I always like to prepare myself by filling up bobbins before I even get started. While the bobbin is filling, I just wanna show you another um, feature. If you hit this, if you touch this little lever right here and go up, you have extra lighting when you're sewing. I love that. That is one of the features that I just love on this machine because I have extra light right here. So my bobbin is, is pretty much full. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna release it. And again, I'm gonna take the bobbin off and then there's a little cutter right here. I'm just going to use that to cut my um, bobbin thread. And now I'm going to put my bobbin into the bobbin case, lift this up. You can see that there's um, uh, eighth of an inch, three eighths, five eighths, really helpful when you're sewing. I'm gonna take my bobbin and I'm gonna always make sure that it's to the left. I'm going to drop in my bobbin and I kind of hold it just so that I have some um, leverage on it. And I'm gonna follow the arrows all the way around and there's a little cutter right there that I'm gonna cut my thread like that. And my bobbin is ready to go because I'm going to put the bobbin case back on top. Then I'm going to take my thread and I am going to do one, two, go down three, four, five, six. Make sure that my thread is in there. Then there is seven right here. Okay. And then there's a little cutter here on the side that I'm going to use. Okay, and then I'm going to take the, the needle threader that's on the side here, go down, and my needle is now threaded. So I am ready to sew. I have my, my bobbin in, and I have my needle threaded. Okay, now we're ready to do some um, sewing. First thing I want to do is a couple of things. Make sure you have a comfortable chair. That's very important because you want to make sure you're comfortable when you're sewing. The next thing is, is I want to show you how you take the foot on and off. There's a little black lever back here that you're going to press in. That releases the foot from the ankle. Every foot has a letter on it, and this one is A. This one matches A on my screen when I want to stitch number one. It's telling me the A foot, and the A foot is right here which is your zigzag foot. So I'm gonna take my foot, and I, there's a bar right here, let me show you, there's a bar. And that bar, I want to put right underneath the ankle where there's a little indentation right there, okay? Then I'm gonna take my foot up and down, go down, and it just clicks the foot right on for me. So I'm going to put my thread through to the back. That's how I like to sew. I like to sew with my thread in the back. So just a habit that I've always had. Put my foot down. I've got the first stitch that I want to do, which is number one. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to show you what a beautiful stitch this is. How quiet the machine is. And we're going to use the um, cutter. And there you go. Look at how nice those stitches are. Now I want to show you something else. One of my favorite stitch to always do is a zigzag. We're gonna pick number nine. Okay, and there's my zigzag. I'm going to do my stitching so I can show you what it looks like. Do 
do about halfway. And I'm going to stop. And I want to make it um, uh, the width wider. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to go all the way up to 7.0. Okay. And I'll make the length go a little bit more too. And there you go. And we're going to do a zigzag larger than the one that was original. Take my cutter. And I wanna show you how you can take one pattern and create your own patterns. I love that. That looks really nice. Put my foot down. Now I'm gonna go into the um, decorative stitches here. You have applique, you have heirloom, satin stitches, decorative stitches. Let's go into the decorative stitches. Let's see what they've got here. And let's do a decorative stitch. Let's do number six. It's telling me that I've got to put the F foot on. So I'm going to lift my foot. I'm going to go to my accessory tray. And I'm going to grab my F foot. Okay. And I'm going to release the back of the foot right here so the foot comes off. I'm going to do the same thing. There's the F that's telling me that I need the F foot. And there's a little bar right there. I'm going to just make the bar match the indentation in the ankle. Go down with my foot so you can see. And again, it just lifts it right up. So now let's put this down here. Foot down. And we're going to do a decorative stitch. And you're going to see how nice this does a decorative stitch. I love the little stars. That's one of my favorites. Just a favorite foot of mine. There we go. And we're going to cut. Okay. And there you go. You've got some really pretty stitches. Now I'm going to go back to the utility. And I'm going to do number one again. I'm going to hit my little lever here so my foot comes down. Put my foot back into my accessory tray. Grab my A foot, because it's telling me A foot. The bar right here, I'm going to make sure that it goes right underneath the indentation on the ankle. Take my foot, go down, and it just clicks back on. Now I want to show you, I do a lot of um, tote bags. And I like to make tote bags. And sometimes I'm using a lot of fabric in layers like this. I'm gonna show you how easy this machine will go over all of those layers. Look at that. Is that not wonderful? I love it. Take my scissors, cut, and there you go. Now I wanna show you I'm gonna grab some um, cotton here. And I wanna show you some appliques. How easy it is to do applique. Let me grab this orange here. Run. Okay. And if I was gonna do an applique, I want to show you how easy it is to do an applique. We're going to go into the decorative. We're going to hit applique. And my favorite is to, is to do kind of like a uh, blanket stitch, which is number R. Again, it's telling me the F foot. I'm constantly, that's what I'm saying. I always have the feet that I like right there in front. Again, release. <clears throat> and I always put whichever foot I'm using back in here so I don't lose them. Then I have a, the bar right there. Again, it's gonna go right underneath that indentation on the ankle, foot down, and it clicks it back on. It's so easy to change the feet back and forth. I just love that. So now I'm gonna pretend I'm doing an applique, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just, there's an indentation right here that I'm just gonna make sure that the end of this is going to follow, okay? 
I put my foot down because I like to, I like to uh, sew with my foot down. And look at how nice this applique is going. Okay, that's one of them. Let's try another one. Let's try this one right here. And let's make it a little bit longer. Okay. I like to play with my stitches and do all different kinds of things. Now, that's a real tight one, but it still looks really cool. Cut with my scissors. And look at that. Look at how nice that applique is. Now let's go back to our utility. And there's two pages. And you can see that there's two pages of that. Now if we go into our heirloom again, you've got your satin, you've got your decorative stitches. I, another thing that I wanna show you, which I think you'll enjoy watching is um, these. These are some um, playful little um, borders that you can do. It's telling me to put the F foot on, which is what I have. And I'm gonna show you the um, little dress form. That's one of my favorites. And I want to show you how, I don't know if you can see it on here. So let's get another piece of denim so you can see it. Okay. I'm just going to cut this denim right here so you can see. And I'm going to put my foot down. And now you're going to see this border that it's going to show. This is really nice if you want a, a, just a border for your um, quilting for a hemline. You can make it go a little bit faster if you want. Wait till you see this. I just love this. Take my scissor and cut, and look at that. Is that not cute? Then on here, there's shoes. Let's do the shoes to show you. You just have to make sure that when you're doing them, you know that the um, dress form goes one way. Your shoes are gonna go another way. So you just wanna make sure that when you're um, sewing it on, that you're going in the direction that you want. And you can see I'm, I'm not even holding on. This machine is just beautiful when it's doing the stitching. Look at that. Now you take your scissor. And look at that, you've got shoes. I think that's cute. Now, if you wanna do something that says handmade, this down and you can actually put handmade and you can see I'm just kind of not even putting pressure on holding it and look at that You'll see when it's done, it says handmade. I did that one time on a quilt just to show handmade. And you can stop it right there so you just have handmade. And I did that and it was really cute. Now you can also go into your alphabet. Let's go into the alphabet. Let's go into the block like so. And I'm gonna put in, um, a, V, A. And then I'm going to put Ava. And I'm gonna put that down. It's telling me to put the F foot in, which is what I have. And 
And again, it's the same thing. It's going to go sideways. So if you're putting a name in, you want to make sure. Okay, it's done. You're going to make sure that it goes just like that sideways. And you can cut your jump stitches if you want. I think that is pretty cute. Now, if I wanted to save something, I put it in the file here and I can save it to my machine so that um, I'm able to use that again, especially if I've created something that I really like, then um, I would do that, put it into the machine or you can put it into your USB stick because you would just put your USB stick in and put it in. Now we're gonna do a rolled hem. We're gonna go into our screen here and the little, um, looks like a little top. I'm gonna to touch that and I'm gonna look for rolled hem right here. Press that, it's telling me the D foot. Here's the D foot for the rolled hem. It has a little bar like all the other um, feet do. And I'm going to take the bar and put it right underneath the ankle, underneath the little, um, indentation here press down on my foot and there's my um my foot on I'm going to take a piece of sheer fabric and I'm going to kind of just do like a finger press of a double hem like so okay and I'm gonna just kind of get it into the rolled hem right there into you know, as you can see it's kind of kind of takes your fabric and rolls it for you put the foot down and as I'm doing it I'm just holding my fabric like this so that it's rolling it right there by the, with the foot get my hands out of the way so you can see but you can see how it's just rolling the fabric as it goes along and this is a really nice rolled hem there we go okay and there we go All right i'm gonna cut it And there you go, look how nice that looks. You've used the rolled hem foot. Okay, now let's do blind, a blind hem, and I'll show you how to use the blind hem foot. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm in my utility stitches. I'm gonna turn the page, and I'm gonna go to number 19. Number 19 is telling me the G foot. Here's the G foot. It has a bar just like the other feet do. I'm gonna put it underneath the ankle, underneath the indentation there, put my foot down, and it has put my foot on for me. I'm gonna take a piece of fabric and I'm gonna take the wrong side of the fabric and I'm just gonna do kind of like a pleat and I'm just gonna finger press it. And there's a little black, um, I'm gonna say flag right there, that I want that little black, little um, guide to just follow the fold of the fabric. And as it goes down, you can see that it's just grabbing a little bit of the fabric. And blind hems are used on, uh, oh, dress pants, uh, skirts, um, anywhere where you really don't want to see the hem that, that uh, to pop out and, or see that stitch rather. I'm going to cut the thread and you can see that's what it looks like on the wrong side. When I go like this, you're going to see there's my blind hem. Now, if I was doing this on a skirt or a pair of pants, I would do the same color thread and you wouldn't even see those little notches. And there's your blind hem. Now we're going to do an overcast stitch. And that's used 
with the overcast foot, which is the letter M. I'm gonna go into my utility screen. I'm gonna turn the page here, and I want number 13. And number 13 tells me it's the M, uh, M foot. The M foot has a bar, just like all the other feet do, and that bar is gonna go right underneath my ankle, and it's going to, the bar is gonna go right underneath that indentation. I'm going to put my foot down, and it's gonna click right into the foot. And I'm gonna show it to you two ways, with a piece of cotton and with a piece of knit. So I'm going to, here's the little guide right here. I'm just gonna put my fabric right underneath the guide. I'm gonna put my foot down and start stitching. And there's two little bars in there that the needle is going around and that's because it's stitching to do an overcast on the edge of your fabric. And if you want to finish off your seams, this is a good way to do it. Okay, and I'm going to cut the fabric. Now those bars right there still have my thread, so you're always going to push back. You don't want to push, push forward. And with my cotton fabric, look at how nice that looks. Okay, now we're gonna do a piece of knit. All right, I like to do it um, to finish off a top. Okay, put foot down. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna put the fabric right up against that guide. And I don't go too fast with my speed because I don't want to um, make the fabric go really fast. I don't want the fabric to go too fast because I want it to be caught up so that it is an overcast stitch. Okay, again, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just push my fabric back. I don't want the um, thread to get caught into those bars. And there you go. There it is with the knit. Look at how nice that looks. That's a real nice overcast stitch.